Patients with a Chiari malformation often present with headaches. Headaches are most commonly in the back of the head, and they occur when the patient is sneezing, coughing, or straining what is called the Valsalva uh, maneuver. That's the most common symptom of patients with a Chiari 1 malformation. Other symptoms with a Chiari 1 malformation include numbness and tingling in the hands or feet, most commonly in the hands. Patients can present with ringing in their ears, memory problems, double vision, a number of different symptoms could be symptoms related to, to Chiari 1 uh, malformation. The reason a Chiari malformation occurs is because at the base of the skull, what's called the foramen magnum, the big opening at the base of the skull, part of the brain is herniating down what's called the cerebellar tonsils. And what occurs in that circumstance is that the flow of the cerebrospinal fluid of the brain cannot freely cross through that area. The tonsils themselves obstruct the free flow of the fluid of the brain. Every time the patient coughs and sneezes, that area gets impacted. The flow of the cerebral spinal fluid is not free. The patient gets increased pressure in the brain and that's why they get the headaches. The pressure in that area presses on the upper spinal cord and that's why the patient gets numbness and tingling in the hands. Another finding that often occurs in Chiari 1 malformation is what's called a syrinx, which is essentially a cyst inside the spinal cord. Sometimes when this cyst occurs, patients develop symptoms like numbness and tingling, weakness or pain in the arms and legs. Sometimes those symptoms go away, sometimes they do not. One of the key components of, of the whole evaluation is to have the accurate diagnosis of the patient. This starts with evaluating the symptoms, evaluating the MRI just to make sure that they all uh, correlate. And here at UPMC, we see many, many patients that travel from all over the country uh, for evaluation for this problem. Given that this is a mechanical problem, there isn't enough space at the base of the skull the solution is mechanical. There's a mechanical problem. The patient needs more space in that area. The surgery itself is an incision in the back of the head. The incision measures approximately five to seven centimeters. The incision is made. The muscles are separated from the base of the skull. And then what's called the occipital bone, the bone at the base of the skull is exposed. And then we perform what's called a craniectomy. We open a window in the bone. The window itself measures approximately three centimeters. And a critical part of the procedure is to open the foramen magnum. We drill down the base of the bone there to provide a wide opening in that area what is tight. Now, one modification which we do here is that I most of the time do not remove the arch of C1. Either I don't remove it at all or remove just the top of C1 really to allow for greater stability in that area as well as to minimize the amount of uh, muscle dissection in that area. Once we open the dura, we then bring a microscope in. And one of the critical parts of the operation is to go in with a microscope and look deep we separate the tonsils of uh, the cerebellum, and what we find often is that there's a lot of scarring which needs to be dissected with a microscope deep in the fourth ventricle. The fourth ventricle is the part of a, the brain, a structure where the flow of the fluid needs to be unobstructed to really relieve the patients from the symptoms of the obstruction. The next step is to shrink the tonsils. What we do with the tonsils is we coagulate them to make them smaller to allow more room there. Once the intradural component of the procedure is completed and there's free flow of CSF, we perform what's called a duroplasty. We add an artificial membrane there which blocks uh, the leakage of a fluid and that needs to be sutured very, very tightly. Once that's done, we then close the muscles uh, in layers and uh, close uh, the skin. What's very, very critical is to determine if the headaches are related to the Chiari 1 malformation. Again, here at UPMC, we have a tremendous amount of experience at our Chiari Center in evaluating these kind of patients.